Uh, I am Victoria Tauli Corpus. I am the chair of the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues, which has been meeting in, the, in this building for the past uh, week and uh, continuing this week. Uh, I would just like to give a brief overview of some of the uh, recommendations that we have uh, uh, come up with in relation to some of the agenda items that we discussed. And uh, first, the, uh, we, we did not go through all the mandated areas of the permanent forum this time. We just focused on reviewing the implementation of recommendations under the issue of socioeconomic development, uh, indigenous women, and the second decade of the world's indigenous uh, people's program of action. Uh, under the socioeconomic development agenda item, we looked into the whole issue of, uh, of uh, corporations, in particular extractive industries corporations, and how they are uh, uh, dealing with the complaints and the issues that indigenous peoples have been bringing before the attention of the permanent forum since its first session in 2002. Uh, we invited the special representative of the Secretary General on Business and uh, Human Rights, and uh, he sent his uh, own representative to speak to the forum where they reiterated uh, the framework that they are using in dealing with uh, extractive industries, uh, but uh, corporations in particular. And uh, the permanent uh, forum uh, agreed that we will support the conceptual and uh, policy framework proposed by the special representative of the Secretary General on the issue of human rights and transnational corporations and other business enterprises. And this uh, uh, framework uh, rests on three pillars. First, the duty of the state to protect against human rights abuses by third parties, including transnational corporations and other business enterprises, through appropriate policies, regulation, and adjudication. And a second, the corporate responsibility to respect human rights, which means acting with due diligence on all matters to avoid infringing on the rights of others. And third, greater access for victims to effective remedies, both judicial and non-judicial. And we link this uh, issue also with the, uh, an item that we discussed this morning, the impact of the uh, global economic crisis on indigenous peoples where we uh, we had a panel and we discussed about how indigenous peoples are affected by the global economic crisis itself in terms of increasing poverty increased uh, expropriation of their lands and territories as well as uh, uh, increased uh, violations of human rights because now uh, there is a very big rush to uh, pump prime the economies to, to resuscitate the economies and uh, the infrastructure budgets of uh, governments and also of uh, international financial institutions have increased significantly. We were told by the World Bank that they have increased their infra infrastructure budget by 15, from 15 billion to 45 billion this year for 2009. And this has caused uh, a, a great alarm for us because uh, they are going to also uh, weaken their safeguard mechanisms so that these infrastructure projects can, uh, can uh, be implemented in the very in a very fast pace at the as many governments look at, at this as the the way by which they can uh, uh, address the crisis in their own uh, countries so this is a problem for us and uh, we we look also for instance at the situation in Canada where infrastructure Canada has increased also by 113 billion Canadian dollars its infrastructure and many of these are going to be used for building highways that are cutting across indigenous people's territories and that are going to facilitate the entry of extractive industries like oil, gas, and mineral uh, companies into the indigenous territories and there are now ongoing uh, 
problems, conflicts like the Kanawaki of the Mohawk, the Kanawaki communities are protesting against uh, these uh, projects that are going to really f hasten extraction in their own communities. And uh, finally, uh, just to say that we also had an uh, in-depth dialogue with the, the UN agencies, which is a practice we didn't uh, do before, but now we decided that we have to increase our collaboration amongst ourselves. So we have chosen six agencies, the UNDP, the UNFPA, DESA, uh, UN body, uh, the Office of the High Commissioner on Human Rights, uh, and uh, the International Fund on Agricultural uh, Development. Now, these six agencies, we held uh, the in-depth dialogues with them where their uh, division chiefs or senior management came, presented what they are doing, and uh, there was a dialogue that ensued which raised questions to the, to the UN agencies. And one of the common uh, recommendations that came out was that after the adoption of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples in 2007, uh, the UN agencies should really revisit their strategies, their guidelines, and their programs and ensure that uh, the declaration informs many of the strategies because Article 41 and 42 of the declaration clearly states that the effective implementation of the declaration rests with the states and UN agencies, bodies, and funds. And uh, the Permanent Forum, of course, has a role to play there. And uh, that was one of the key uh, uh, demand and uh, request also from uh, many indigenous peoples who took part in the dialogue. Uh, governments also raised some questions with the agencies in terms of how they are integrating uh, more effectively indigenous peoples concerns in their programs at the global, at the national and also at the regional level. So I would like to stop there and ask, uh, see if you have questions to ask from me. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.